The Devils went to the island, and unfortunately, they weren't able to survive it. They dropped their latest matchup 5-1 to one, to New York. However, it's not as bad as people are making it out to be, but still time to raise some certain concerns. We have a lot to talk about in today's episode of Locked on Devils. Buckle up, everybody. You're Locked on Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked on Devils with Trey Matthews. All righty now, what is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils podcast here on Locked On Network. I'm your host, college hockey play-by-play -play announcer, Devils writer for Pucks and Pitchforks, and also part-time credential media member, Trey Matthews. So talk about a complete 360. So from clinching a playoff spot in exciting fashion against the Ottawa Senators to losing to the New York Islanders by a score of 5-1. to one. Worth mentioning that the Islanders are playing for their season at this point. They are in desperation mode because they are trying to fend off the Pittsburgh Penguins. So at the time of this recording, the Islanders have 85 points and the Penguins have 82. So basically it's a sprint dash to the finish. The New Jersey Devils can sit comfortably because like I just mentioned, they already clinched the playoff spot, but you got teams like the New York Islanders. They are coming out hungry and they are coming out with desperation and the New Jersey Devils felt that thanks to mostly Kyle Palmieri. So, uh, yeah, the loss was bad for the New Jersey Devils. However, it wasn't that bad. And here are some of the factors that I wrote down and we're going to discuss later on in the episode. So, for one, they ran into hot goaltending. Two, Thomas Tatar's waved off goal could have been a difference maker for the Devils. But as we know, uh, the Devils, for some reason, uh, I think they lead the league in uh, waved off goals. So I don't know what the record is, but the Devils can't be too far off, right? And third, two of the goals that the Islanders scored were empty netter goals. So the scoreboard doesn't really do the Devils all that much justice. But still, this is the first time this year that the New Jersey Devils have lost by more than three goals. So we're going to start with what went wrong for the Devils. And then I'll talk about some of the stuff that maybe Devils fans can take away in a positive manner just to give us some more hope because look guys we're going to the playoffs at this point the devils aren't really playing for anything uh, other than pride and just to finish out the rest of the season i'm sure they have their eyes set on the playoffs but still an outing like tonight is no excuse then in the second segment i'm going to talk about the main question that i put out on twitter which is is it time to be a little concerned for devils and then like i do with every post game recap i'm going to compare the stats and give you guys a letter grade so Let's start out with the defensive lapses for the New Jersey Devils, primarily at the hands of Ryan Graves. So the Devils gave up the first goal of the game to Pierre Engvall, and here's what happened. So Kyle Palmieri torched uh, Ryan Graves, essentially. So Ryan Graves blew a tire when he was trying to defend Kyle Palmieri. Kyle Palmieri was able to get past him, so Palmieri lets a shot go on Vitek Vancek, and unfortunately, due to the defensive lapse of Ryan Graves, it left John Marino in a vulnerable position. So John Marino, as soon as Kyle Palmieri shot it on Vitek Vancek, he was just trying to press up on uh, Palmieri just to make sure that Palmieri didn't get the opening. But trailing right behind him was Engvall, and Engvall was able to get an open rebound opportunity, and thus it's one nothing New York Islanders. Then in the second period, Eric Hollow was able to get a shorthanded goal, and he was just sprinting to the other side of the ring. So that was really exciting to see. I know during the course of the season, we've been talking about how sometimes unlucky Eric Holla can be, but it was nice to see him get that shorthanded goal. And I think that was one of his prettiest goals of the season, to be honest. But nonetheless, like I said, it was a Kyle Palmieri show. So Kyle Palmieri got an assist on the first goal of the game, and then Kyle Palmieri was able to put the Islanders back on top. And here's what happened. So uh, Ryan Graves, once again, was trying to get back on defense. And instead of smothering Palmieri, Graves dropped back a little bit. Now, Cam Danico did shine some light and provided his perspective as to why Ryan Graves had that missed coverage. He believed that Ryan Graves was trying to anticipate a two-on-one situation because I think he was going back to that Engvall uh, goal back in period number one. So he was just trying to make sure that no one was trailing uh, Paul Mary in that sort of circumstance. But as a result, Paul Mary was able to just basically waltz his way into an open opportunity, and thus he makes it two-to-one in favor of the Islanders. And then period number three, Kyle Palmieri once again. So 
here's what happened. It was a turnover in the defensive end for the New Jersey Devils. Basically, Andre Pilat, he was trying to uh, do a backhanded pass to Jack Hughes. And here's the thing. I, I, I will uh, say this. Andre Pilat was being pestered a little bit, and he was running out of room. However, Jack Hughes was wide open. So he didn't need to overshoot Jack Hughes in that case. But unfortunately, he did. Turns the puck back over to the Islanders, and Kyle Palmieri was able to score relatively late in period number three, and that was pretty much the dagger goal. And then the other two goals that were scored by the Islanders, thanks to Bo Horvat and uh, Zach Parise, they were empty netter goals. So worth mentioning, here's a not-so-fun fact. That was Horvat's first goal in 12 games. It was an empty netter goal, but still just want to put that out there. And then for Zach Parise, I talked about him, uh, I believe, in the previous episode when I was discussing Jack Hughes being the first 40-goal scorer since uh, Zach Parise was – a devil, and now Zach Parise, the irony isn't lost, able to score in this one, empty in that goal, but still nonetheless. So basically, it was a revenge tour for the former Devils in Kyle Palmieri and Zach Parise. Now, here's the thing. Um, the Devils did run into some hot goaltending, and I'm going to talk about that momentarily, but the defensive lapses, especially by Ryan Graves, we've been seeing this far too often during the course of the season. And I now I think people are starting to see it in, 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 in a full perspective, which is like, wow, the Devils are not as strong as they once were a few weeks ago. And now they're seeing like some of the defensive mistakes that they're making. So we see like open breakaways. We see two-on-one opportunities. We see that the Devils aren't clearing. We see that the Devils are giving up too many rebounding opportunities because the Devils were outshot in this game by the New York Islanders by a comfortable margin throughout uh, most of the game. Now, they were able to narrow it down because the shots on goal differential was 36 to 31, still in favor of the Islanders. But still, the Islanders were having their way at least towards the beginning of the game. So for the Devils, you've got to find a way to tighten up the defense a little bit. So I know I get on Dougie Hamilton a lot, but I just need to see John Marino, Jonas Siegethal. I need to see those stay-at-home defensemen basically do what they did uh, at least in the first half of the year, which is smother more shot opportunities. Just basically use your bodies to your advantage. Like the Devils, and courtesy of my partner, Jersey Joe, he likes to call uh, this Devils unit the Sasquatch squad. Well, in that case, use your big bodies to your advantage. Why aren't they doing that? Like like I said, like I, I just feel as though sometimes it gets forgotten about because the Devils obviously have been winning uh, a lot throughout the course of the year. But it's something that I've just been picking up, which is like, the devil's defensive lapses, it might come back to bite them. And we're going to talk about it in a future episode because if the devils want any chance of success come playoff time, their defense, that's going to be priority number one. Because the offense, you can theoretically score one or two goals and come away with the win. But if you have a strong defensive unit, then you're going to be just fine for success. And that's not even my words. And of course, I'm paraphrasing a little bit. But when I had Bruce Driver on this show about a month ago, he basically said the same thing, which is like the Devils going into his respective uh, Stanley Cup run back in 1995. The Devils were heavily underdogs. But the thing was is that they had that trap defense. Now, he said that they didn't use the word trap that wasn't in their dictionary, but still, they had a strong defensive unit. And as a result, the Devils were able to come away with the upset victory over the heavily favored Detroit Red Wings and throughout the course of the playoffs, nonetheless. So that's what's going to be crucial for the Devils if they want any chance of success come playoff time. It's going to start with your defense because it, it, you can get away with it if it's a one-and-done type of game, but it's not. It's going to be a series, and you need to beat this team four out of seven times. So my thing is, like, you have to tighten that up because mistakes like that, especially against the New York Islanders team, which I'm not trying to disrespect the Islanders in any which sort of way, but they shouldn't really be competing with the Devils in this sort of way. And we kind of seen it throughout the course of the year. So first game of the year when the Islanders played uh, play the Devils back in October, Devils came away with a four to one victory. Then my first day as a credential media member for the Devils back in December, Islanders came away with the victory six to four. Devils tried to amount a comeback, but it was too little too late. And in this game, like I said, the scoreboard doesn't do the Devils justice, but they still lost five to one. So that's where it's going to start with the Devils, which is you're going to have to start uh, tightening up your defense a little bit because if this game was any indication, it goes to show you that the defense is probably going to be an Achilles heel for a devil. So we talk about their power play. Some people are blaming Lindy Ruff, whatever the case might be. My thing is like, you got to start at the defense because that's going to make or break you come the playoffs.
So as I alluded to in the first segment of today's show, I talked about how the New Jersey Devils ran into some hot goaltending. So courtesy of our friend James Nichols, who's a writer for the fourth period, he tweeted out the deserve to win meter shortly after the game. And apparently, according to that meter, the Devils apparently win 76.7% of the time after so-and-so simulations, whereas for the Islanders, it's 23.3%. So according to that statistic, the Devils should have come away with the win. And James Nichols clarified as to why that might have been the case. He said that Sorokin made about 3.97 goals saved above expected tonight. So when I first saw it, I was a little confused. I was like, really? The Devils deserve to win it more than the Islanders? I I don't know, because this wasn't the Devils' best showing. But then again, when you think about Sorokin and the job he did and also the defensive lapses that the Devils have, maybe that also plays a factor. But I think the main thing that we also need to talk about is that Thomas Tatar waved off goal because the score was two to one and the Devils supposedly tied the game thanks to Thomas Tatar from a redirect at the hands of Dougie Hamilton. So Dougie Hamilton let a shot go and Thomas Tatar was able to redirect it on in. However, the referees not it didn't take them that long to decide to wave it off saying, nope, nope, you kicked it in. Now, the NHL decided to do a review on it. It wasn't a coach's challenge, so the Devils didn't have to go on the penalty kill the nhl decided to have the referees uh review it so they reviewed it and the call stood as it was now a lot of people were wondering did thomas tatar kick the puck in now in his post-game interview uh thomas tatar said that he didn't see the puck and eric holla also backed him up on that by saying like why is it a, a a kick puck violation when he doesn't see the puck so the thing is, like, do I think that Thomas Tatar intentionally tried to kick the puck? Well, no, because everyone knows the rule. Like, if you kick the puck in, it's going to get waved off instantly. But when looking at the replay, and Bill Spaulding and Cam Danico also acknowledged it on air, just looking at it, there was just too much forward motion, I believe, on the left leg of Thomas Tatar. So whether it was his intent or not, he did ultimately inadvertently kick the puck on in. So... As you guys know, I'm big on uh, the frustration as to why the Devils get so many goals waved off. I've vented on the show. Hell, I vented in a recent episode talking about that the uh, the, the instigator call on Miles Wood was completely BS and that 10-minute uh, misconduct, I didn't think that was uh, justified at all. So you guys know that I'm big on just venting if, if I feel like a call is incorrect. But in this sort of circumstance, the, the referees got it right. Now, the point I'm trying to make is that we've seen this story pan out before, which was that first time we played against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Devils were up one to nothing, and then Ryan Gray supposedly scores a goal, gets waved off because Thomas Shatar was deemed uh, with a goalie interference call, and thus it got uh, revoked. And as a result, the Lightning scored four unanswered goals on the Devils. So in this sort of way, the circumstance is just a tad bit different because obviously that was the game time goal and maybe that could have shifted the momentum back into the devil's favor. But the thing I have to say is like, okay, how do you respond to that? And unfortunately, the devils throughout the rest of the game, they just didn't really show that great of effort. Like towards the end of period number three, I think they started to pick it up a little bit, but it was too little too late. So when looking at as at that deserved to win meter I think they're factoring in that Sorokin was just a man on fire in between the pipes for the Islanders. Not going to take that away from him. And then for the Devils, it was like they could have tied the game, had that call for Thomas Tatar gone a little differently. But still, I believe it was a correct call by the NHL. I'm sorry. And also, it's just like, you know, I'm sure there's some other factors that play into it. But my thing is simply this. Like, Sorokin, hot goaltending, yes, that's going to happen. But how many times have we heard that excuse? And going back to Thomas Tatar, it's just like, okay, you got a goal waved off. You got to respond to it somehow, some way, because come the playoff time where you're going against best of the best, nobody's going to care. You got to find a way to squeak out the victory. So that's my overall thing for Devils, which is like, I, I see what the numbers say. I, I acknowledge what Sorokin's doing. And I know that Thomas Tatar, it's not his fault that unfortunately he inadvertently kicked the puck on in. But still, it's, it's no excuse to maybe not try and find a way to find it, the puck go past Sorokin somehow, some way. Because, like I said, if the defensive lapses don't happen, if, if Ryan Graves doesn't make those two blunders, if Andre Palat doesn't make his blunder, I get that the game outcome is a little different because then those two empty netter goals get revoked, obviously, because then the, then there's no reason to pull Vitek Vancek from the game to get the extra attacker. But 
ultimately, I, I, I get the circumstances, but it's just no excuse for the Devils. Now, the question is, is it time to be concerned for them? Now, I was going to talk about it in today's episode, but I actually tweeted that question out. And basically, you guys showed a lot of passion towards that tweet because I, my Twitter feed was just bombarded with responses and your overall opinions. And I was like, this is too good to not make it a centerpiece of an episode. So obviously today is a game recap. So I'm going to make it a full-fledged episode, possibly in the next episode in which I talk about like uh, your guys' responses and I respond to it. I tell you where I agree in, where I disagree in, or maybe some of you provide me a different perspective. So I'll talk about that in a future episode. But to give you guys a little bit of a snippet, is it time to be concerned for the Devils? Well, I would say concern is a strong word. Obviously, it's not a time to panic, but maybe it's something you're you're looking at practice or 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 just like film session, whatever the case might be. You're just like, oh, we could be so much better. But here's some factors that obviously we have to uh, consider. Nathan Bastian is out, and remember, Christy Flannery wrote an article back in December that also touched on Nathan Bastian when he first down when he first went down with an injury, and basically Christy Flannery said like. Um, uh, Nathan Bastion was supposedly going to be a bigger loss than Andre Pilat and Mackenzie Blackwood. And, and, and unfortunately, she was proven correct because I was like, I, I remember I joked with Christy about this. I was like, must you be right about this certain, uh, this certain circumstance? Because during the month of December, Devils had an awful, awful, awful month. And then because if you guys need a refresher, Andre Pilat was not a part of the 13-game win streak. And then Mackenzie Blackwood went down early on in the 13-game win streak. Vitek Vancek steps in. Same with Akira Schmidt, and they were able to play lights out. So that was that was my thing, which was like she was right. Mackenzie Blackwood, Andre Pilat, they went down with injuries, but they were proven to be replaceable. Nathan Bashan on that BMW line, that was what made the Devils so impactful. It was an X factor, and lo and behold, <laughs> that month of December, awful for the Devils, and I think Nathan Bashan's um, absence is certainly missed. Power play needs to pick up just a little bit more. I, I think everyone can attest – uh, to me on that. And then for the lineup changes, I don't know why we're rolling with 11 forwards and then seven defensemen. Can we go back to 12 forwards and six defensemen? I don't know why Lindy Ruff is so big on Brendan Smith. I really don't. I, I get that he's a leader in the locker room because once again, I spoke to Christy Flannery about it. And she says that the reason why Brendan Smith is probably being given the role that he currently is, is just because he's a good leader and he's a good veteran piece. And that's valid. And I've never spoken to Brendan Smith. So like I said in a previous episode, I will take uh, Christy Flannery's word. But my thing is like I, the performance wise, I think it needs to go into the favor of Kevin Ball, quite honestly. So I, I think Kevin Ball needs to remain in the lineup. Yeah, he was like Bambi when he first got up and he was basically a turnover machine. But uh, Jersey Joe, he was big on Kevin Ball, said he was a Sasquatch member, had a lot of potential. And I think Kevin Ball has justified as to why he should remain in the lineup. And why is Jesper Boquist a scratch? I think he's been performing somewhat respectable the last couple of weeks. I remember when he scored two goals against the uh, Arizona Coyotes. I was in attendance for that game and I got to speak with them post game. So that's my thing, which is like, it's something to be brought into the light. It, is it time to be concerned? I say a little bit because let's face it, some of these last few games for the Devils, they definitely could have gone a lot differently had they done this, that, or a third. And I'll talk about it in a future episode. But, you know, if you need a refresher, when looking at their schedule, obviously they lost 5-1. They beat the Senators 5-3. They got off to a slow start. And that game against the Buffalo Sabres was just awful, like beyond awful. I was trying to give the Devils the benefit of the doubt those last couple of games just because I was like, maybe they're, they're still on pins and needles, just a little nervous about potentially clinching a playoff spot. And it's, it's all so surreal. So maybe they're just a little paralyzed in, in that sort of way. But my thing was like, okay, you need to actually go out. And after the Rangers uh, beat the Florida Panthers, I thought, okay, maybe word got into the locker room. Maybe players checked their phones. Maybe someone relayed a message. But uh, because they played much better. Now, they claimed that they didn't know about it post game, but I, I'm a little skeptical about it. That's just on my end because, like, things spread like wildfire. Like, you can't avoid anything, especially in this day and age. So, that's my that's my perspective. I can't prove or deny it, but that that's my that's my perspective on it. Then that mini series against the Lightning, first game was an absolute uh, crap shoot, and then the second game uh, lost in a shootout. I, I'll give the Dev Devils the benefit of the doubt. They walked away with a point, but 
that third game, they were able to redeem themselves. But let's talk about that game on March 18th against the Panthers, in which the Devils were up 2 nothing. They gave up four unanswered goals. Unacceptable. But the Devils were able to shut out the Carolina Hurricanes on March 12th, and that was probably the, their most exciting win of the season. The prior game against the Canadians, 3-1. to So, like I said, we'll talk about it in a future episode. There's depth, And I remember being in attendance for that Arizona Coyotes game and getting to speak with the players post-game and also Lindy Ruff because it wasn't their best showing. So there's a there's definitely a lot to break down in terms of being concerned about the Devils. But my thing is, like, I think it's time to be a little concerned, not time to panic, but come playoff time, you can't be having these types of mistakes. You're going to get exposed. Now, before we wrap up this post-game recap episode, I want you guys to eat a little healthier. So let me tell you about a product I use literally every day. So I started taking AG1 because I wanted to be happier, wanted to be healthier. So what is the stuff? With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and abstinence to help start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, and focus aging, all those things. So it's lifestyle is friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free. Contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, or artificial anything while still tasting good. Supports better sleep quality and recovery. Supports mental clarity and alertness. It's one thing that's best about Athletic Greens that uses best of the best products based on the latest science with constant product iterations and third-party testing. So right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with a convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out after your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL network to take ownership over your health. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. And now speaking on the topic of health, let me tell you about Built Bar. So looking for a delicious treat, but don't want all the fat and calories, then you got to try a Built Bar. So healthy is actually tasty with Built Bar. Ser- seriously, they're so delicious. You won't think that they're good for you. Perfect for your New Year's resolution of eating happier and healthier. We're like three months out of New Year's, but still, I'm sure a lot of you are still trying to eat healthier. So what makes Built Bar so good? Well, for stars, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. That's right, real chocolate. And they come in unbelievable flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, and coconut almond. I'm not sure how Built does it, but somehow, some way, only 130 calories and 4 grams of sugar with a whopping 17 grams of protein. And you don't need to wait around to get a box. For years, we've been talking about ordering your Built Bars at Built.com. Now you can get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club. That's right. Head to your nearest Walmart today. Walk to the pharmacy section and grab yourself a box of Built Bars. You can pick up a four-bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puffs. If you're close to Sam's Club, run in and grab a 13-bar box with our hip flavors, brownie batter, and churro. You can thank me later. Built Bar is a protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. Okay, so to close out this show, let's look at the final stats, and then I will give the Devils a letter grade. So shots on goal category, 36-31 to 31 in favor of the Islanders. Face-off percentage. 59% to 42% in favor of the Islanders. Power play, Devils were 0 for 2, but they did have a shorthanded goal. Islanders were 0 for 1. They also had a shorthanded goal, thanks to Zach Parise, because the Devils went on the power play. But unfortunately, they did pull Vitek Vanacek to get uh, another extra attacker. So Zach Parise was able to get the empty netter, shorthanded goal. And then hits 24 to 13 in favor of the Islanders. Can the Devils please hit somebody? Check on somebody, like play more aggressive. Like that's another thing that need, that their defense needs to work on. Blocks, 19 to 15 in favor of the Islanders. Giveaways, Islanders led that department 13 to 8. So after pondering, after reviewing everything, after basically just trying to figure it out, like, because like I said, it was bad, not that bad as people are making it out to be. Devils ran the hot goaltending. Got to factor in Thomas Tatar's um, missed goal or waved off goal. Two empty netter goals. Doesn't do the scoreboard any justice. Um, yeah, like I said, this could have gone different in more ways than one. So I, I, I'm not going to give him an F. I was thinking about giving the Devils a D, but I'll be conservative. I'll give him a C. Mm, no, I'm going to give him a C minus. I'll give the Devils a C minus because – Like I said, the excuses are waning. You're a playoff team. Figure it out and don't drop games like that. Like, okay, I get it. You ran into hot goaltending. Got to figure it out. Uh, You you had defensive lapses and obviously circumstances happen. Figure it out. Redeem yourself. You had a goal waved off. Figure it out. That's my thing for the Devils. Figure it out. Okay? Because come playoff time, 
teams are not going to give to. Sorry, I can't cuss on this show. So I, I, I had to mute myself, essentially. So teams aren't going to care. So that's my thing for the Devils. You got to figure it out. You're still a very good team. You're still an up and coming team, essentially, because uh, a lot of people did doubt at you at the beginning of the year. Now you're a playoff team. And I get that a lot of these players haven't seen the light of day after 82 games. Like Eric Hollis said in his postgame interview, he's not satisfied with just reaching the playoffs. He's been to the playoffs before. He wants to win. So if you want to win, you got to redeem yourself somehow, some way. So that's my two cent opinion on everything that transpired between the Devils and the Islanders. Let me know what you guys think. If you're watching on YouTube, leave a comment down below. If you're listening on podcast streaming service, hit me up on my personal Twitter page at TreyMat4 or the show's Twitter page at Locked On Devils. As for today's episode, that's all the time I have for you. So continue to stay safe. Have a wonderful day, New Jersey. Go Devils. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Thanks for listening once again.